And that looks good enough, so we're going to hit OK, close that up, and go to our next stroke. Again, we're going to add a drop shadow, but this time we want the size to be a little smaller, maybe two, so we get a more harsh edge on it. Go back to our bevel and emboss, and like before, we're going to uncheck the use global light and put it very close to the center. And that's all we need to do for that, so hit OK. Close that up. And then we're going to go to our actual text and add our drop shadow. But this time we're actually going to bring the size all the way down to zero so we get a very, very harsh and crisp looking shadow right below it. And you can uncheck the use global light and mess with that if you so choose. But I'm going to keep it right there because it looks good enough. And again, activate your bevel and emboss. And we're going to do the same thing as before by unchecking our use global light and making the light source very close to the center. But this time, we're going to increase our depth quite a bit and mess with our size so that we get a very interesting looking effect going on right here. And we're going to add another effect on top of that, which is a inner shadow. And we want to make the inner shadow a very light blue and hit OK. And you want to change the blend mode to color dodge. Couldn't remember what it was for a second there. And again, uncheck the use global light. And if you go over here, you can actually drag this around and see where you want that to be. I think right there looks all right and you can increase and decrease the opacity depending on how much you want the edges to get that nice little tint there and get a little before and after and that looks pretty good right there so we'll hit OK and I actually forgot an effect on our orange stroke so you want to double click the effects button and we're going to add a gradient overlay and by default it should have black to white but we want to change the blend mode to an overlay and you should see that we get this yellow to orange gradient and we'll just change the angle a little bit and if you think that's a little bit too intense then you can actually change it to soft light but I liked it better the other way just want to decrease the opacity a little bit and that looks pretty good right there so now we want to get those halftone effects that we saw before these little dots that we see and to do that we're gonna to go to our top layer create a new one and we're gonna make these our default black and white or hit the letter D and we're gonna fill it with black by using alt backspace and if you go to your gradient tool with the letter G you want to go to your foreground to transparent tool, close that up, hit the letter X to switch it to white, and if you click from around here, hold shift and go close to halfway and let go, you'll get your white to black gradient. And from there you go filter, pixelate, color halftone. And right off the bat, just make all these channels go to zero and the max radius is actually more of a judgment call but I've played with this a little bit before so I wanna change it to seven and if I hit OK I can get these dots again you guys are gonna have to play with this a little bit to get the right size and I have black dots here and I really want them to be white so I'm gonna do control I to invert it and I want to load this selection so I'm gonna go over here to our channels and control click the RBG sorry RGB channel and that will select all of our white in the layer and if you go back to our layers and create a new layer turn that off fill it with white with alt backspace because that is our foreground color and deselect and here we go we've got our dots that we saw from before and we're gonna make two duplicates of this 
So that way we should have a total of three, and we're gonna turn these two off, and we're gonna take this layer and put it right above our text, and if you hold the Alt button and put it in between these two layers, you should get this interesting looking icon. Don't really know what that is, but if you click it, it will actually mask it so that it stays within the word crazy. And then you can just move it around and change the size of your dots so that it looks the way you want it to look. And that looks good to me right there. So what you wanna do is change the blend mode from normal to overlay and you'll get these light blue looking dots right here. So with that we're almost done but not quite and I want to make our background a different color right now so we're actually going to go to our swatches again and I'm going to right click the red oops sorry not right click control click there we go and that should make red our foreground color and go over to the color tab and you want to lower ooh, hang on click that red there we go and you want to lower how much red there is to maybe 160 180 somewhere in that general area and go to our gray layer and fill it with that red and there you go but that's a little bit too much so lower that down a little more and that looks a lot better. So we're gonna get these two layers that have our dots on them and we're gonna drag them right above our red background. Go ahead and turn these two layers back on and what you wanna do is take this upper one and go to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical and then with your move tool you can move it into place and use our bottom one and put them into place. So there we go. We have our dots in place, but in my example, these were not white. In fact, they were very different from white. And so if we want to make these the color we want them to be, we're going to lock the transparency like we did before. And we want to fill them with the same color as our background. Now obviously, since they're the same color as our background, we're not gonna be able to see them. But if you turn that off, you can see that they are still there. So what you wanna do is take your layer, I'm gonna change the blend mode to, not overlay, color dodge. And then if you use our second one and change it to overlay, you'll get a different color. So you can go through these and just see what looks the best by going through all of your different blend modes. That one actually looked good right there, linear burn. And so just play with these, see what you like. I think I'm getting the best, hey, here we go, hard mix looks all right. So that should be about it. Just keep playing with those, see what colors you like, see what blending modes you prefer over others, and you are finished. Congratulations. If you have any questions, just post a comment or email me at brandon at and see you next time.